to an NBC 26 exclusive TV interview. Today, filmmakers from Netflix's Making a Murder series in the Fox Valley interviewing Brendan Dassey's former attorney, Lynn Kaczynski, for part two of their series. Now, Kaczynski invited NBC 26 and USA Today network newspapers inside before his interview with the film crew. Tonight, he opens up about the case, how it impacted him, and the things he would change more than a decade later. It certainly had an effect on me when it came out on December 18th of uh, 2015. Lynn Kaczynski still remembers the day Making a Murderer was released. So this is extremely negative and obnoxious nature at all hours of the day and night. We just put it on silent mode finally. That's when the harassing messages on Facebook through email and phone calls started. He was going through treatment for leukemia at the time. Some people going so far, even wishing for his death. Most of the reaction uh, was from uh, out of the state of Wisconsin. Kaczynski represented Brendan Dassey in the 2005 murder of Teresa Halbuck. Dassey, a teenager at the time, was accused of murdering Halbuck along with his uncle, Stephen Avery. Dassey was found guilty and sentenced to life in prison. A taped confession from Dassey was the main piece of evidence during the trial, and it's that confession tape creating headlines today. NBC 26 Live at 6, a federal judge overturns Brendan Dassey's conviction. Dassey's case now in the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals in Chicago. His current attorneys claim he was coerced into a confession. Especially since we've had Duffin's opinion in the meantime, basically saying an issue that I laid the foundation for on appeal, the validity of Dassey's confession is in fact probably their best issue in front of the Seventh Circuit Court of Appeals. We may not know until this summer how the judges will rule, but their outcome could turn into a new trial for Dassey or lead to his release. Kaczynski says the Netflix series focused on the confession and believes they singled them out. Uh, biggest misconception is that anything I did contributed to Dassey's guilty verdict at his trial. And although he's never watched the documentary, from what he's heard, in his opinion, the series left out some key pieces of evidence. Uh, so, so I thought there was a lot of important stuff that was left out. Basically the fact there was no cause and effect between anything that I did and the fact that Brendan Dassey's in prison. However, he explains looking back, there were mistakes he made, like not being present during the interrogation. No adults were there on behalf of Brendan Dassey. Kaczynski says he had army drill at the time and did not want to cancel. Uh, but in retrospect, I should have just said we're going to wait till later next week. Another mistake in his eyes, using the investigator he did. NBC 26 and one newspaper reporter were invited for the interview. We wanted to talk with the filmmakers to get their take on part two. Okay. Sure. However, crew members told Kaczynski they wouldn't come in until local media left. And when we approached them for an interview, Okay. So why, after going through harassment, would Lynn Kaczynski want filmmakers to interview him for part two? Uh, my hope is just to enhance public understanding of how the criminal justice system works. There's a lot of myths out there, a lot of conspiracy theories. In his words, a chance for him to set the record straight. Kaczynski says the series did not have an effect on his work. He currently works as a part-time judge for the village of Fox Crossing. According to reports, the second season of Netflix's Making a Murderer will likely start before the end of this year and will likely focus on the appeals process for both Stephen Avery and Brendan Dassey. For complete coverage of the Making a Murderer documentary and the Teresa Halbuck murder trial, be sure to watch our Avery Uncut series on NBC26.com.